Okay, so we're going to talk about the reaction gives energy now. And so let's say that we have some reaction that goes from A to B over here. And so over the course of the reaction, B is going to increase and A is going to be used up and it's going to decrease. And so if we look at the change in Gibbs energy, then that's going to depend on the chemical potential of substance B. And since we're getting more of it, it's going to increase and it's going to be based off of the number of moles of it that we get. And then we're going to lose chemical potential from substance A, and that's going to be depending on the number of moles of that that we get, that we lose. And so the reaction Gibbs energy is really looking at the change in Gibbs energy based off of those, the, the, divided by the, the change in moles of like all of the substances. And so it's really looking at the difference between the two chemical potentials. And so if we look at something more complicated, then this means that we need to also take into account these coefficients in our reaction. And so it's been expanded out here. We still have our products are increasing. Our reactants are being used up. And so they're going to decrease, which is why we have that negative sign. Um, and at the end of the day, again, our reaction gives energy um, is going to really just depend on the change, the, the chemical potential for our products times the coefficients that correspond to each of those products minus the chemical potential of our reactants times the, the coefficients that correspond to those reactants. And so what does this look like for an actual, for, for some sort of reaction? And so here, um, I, I, we have Gibbs energy along the left, we have the composition along the bottom, and so on one side we have pure reactants, on the other side we have pure products. And so we can kind of map out what the Gibbs energy might look like, and so for some arbitrary reaction, um, we have our Gibbs energy is our minimum, is at minimum when it has some fraction of products versus reactants. And so um, if we're looking at the reaction Gibbs energy, we're really looking at the change in Gibbs energy for the change of moles. So that's really looking at the slope in different spots of this curve. And so, um, and so it's this slope that we're going to use in order to tell us um, what, how, which direction the spine, the, 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 the re, in which direction is the reaction going to occur spontaneously. And so here, and so we can say that our slope is delta G over N, and so it's rise over run, and so we have our rise in Gibbs energy based off of the moles in when that are changing based off the composition. And so in this region, our slope which is equal to our gives our reaction gives energy is going to be negative here it's going to be positive and then here it's going to be zero and so this is telling us that here we haven't made enough reactants and so the reaction is going to spontaneously progress towards the right um, here, we've made too many products. It's going to go to the left. And notice, so our reaction gives energy is negative. It's going to go to the right. It's positive. It's going to go to the left. And then at the minimum, at equilibrium, it's going to equal zero.